Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Welcome to this lesson on geometric sequences. A geometric sequence is something um, produced by multiplying each term in a sequence by a constant value, a common ratio of two in the next term. So for example, 2, 4, 8, 16. This would be a geometric sequence, we're just doubling it every time. And the common ratio here would be 2. Uh, another one, we could start with 3, and then maybe we could still times by 2, so 3, 6, 12. This would also be a geometric sequence. Now, why is it called geometric sequence? I'm not entirely sure, actually, and I've had a little look, and you might say, well, it's to do with geometry, but, you know, how exactly? Well, one way that I've seen is that the length of something, if we call it r, if we make a square using those lengths, we get r squared. If we make a cube, r cubed. If we go into four dimensions, r to the power of four, and so on. This is an example of a geometric sequence, so maybe it's got something to do with that. All right, we'll put that to one side for now. We know what a geometric sequence is. How can we find the nth term of some geometric sequences? Well, for this sort of thing, um, you can see for this first one that I've made up, it's two to the power n. And this one um, is, is similar to 2 to the power n, but it doesn't kind of work out the same sort of way. It's going to sort of work, but not quite. Well, let's come back to that one. Let's look at these. So here I'm multiplying by 3 every time. And I can see this is going to be 3 to the power n. And actually, I should probably do it properly. I can write that un is equal to 3 to the power n. That's my nth term. What about this next one? Um, this time, I'm dividing by 2 every time, but that's equivalent to multiplying by a half. If we stick to what we multiply by and turn it into a fraction, that makes it a little bit easier. So here, it's like I've got half to the power n, but I don't have half to the power n, do I? Because that would be a half, a quarter, and so on. It's sort of been shifted up, so I can kind of try and figure out what I need to multiply by. And instead of it starting with a half, it's starting with two. So I think I need to multiply by four. That's going to be my nth term. By the way, I can basically figure that out by finding the zeroth term. When n is zero, this thing here is going to be one. And so if I go back a term, that's going to basically give me my starting value. And I can use that trick, trick on some of the other ones. So if we do 6, 12, 24, actually that's very similar to this one that I spoke about. Then what am I multiplying by? What's my common ratio? Well, it's 2. I'm multiplying by 2 every time. So it's sort of going to be 2 to the power n. But it's not, is it? I just remembered, actually, I could also rewrite that last one as 4 times 2 to the minus n. So if I, if I wanted to. Both of these are fine. Okay, back to this one. It's like 2 to the power n. Um, but it's not 2, 4. It's 6. 12. So what am I doing? I'm multiplying through by 3 every time. It's 3 times 2 to the power n. And if I look at the zeroth term, I get that 3. This zeroth term is really handy. This one, un is going to, whoops, that doesn't look like an n. Well, here my common ratio is x. I'm timesing by x every time. And actually, it's just x to the n. Finally, this is the most general form of a geometric sequence. And what am I multiplying by? I'm multiplying by r every time. So it's going to be a bit like r to the n. But if I write that sequence down, I'll get r, r squared, r cubed. Hmm, I don't have that. I start with a. So maybe let's look at that zeroth term again. I'm going to need to divide by a, and that would give me a divided by r. So it's going to be a divided by r times r to the n to sort that out. And that's going to give us a r to the n minus 1. There we go. This is going to be the general formula of a geometric sequence. When I have my starting term as a and my common ratio as r. Some of the other ones, you know, I end up with a 2 to the n here because I've already kind of got a 2 in that first term. But in general, if we've just got this sort of constant term without the common ratio, this is what we're going to use. So learn this formula. It's not on the formula book, and it's going to be really invaluable in different scenarios. Just going to you know, basically write this as a summary. 
Okay, a geometric sequence has a common ratio, and we call that r, capital, uh, small r, just like little d was the common difference on an arithmetic sequence. A is the first term, as before, and then, oh, they've written a n here. Sometimes you might see u n used. Um, to be honest, I prefer u n, and that's going to equal a to the r n minus 1, and I like to think we've basically shown that to be true in this first part of the lesson. All right, so we've got our formula for geometric sequence. Let's look at some examples. My recommendation is that you try these yourselves and then um, I will go through them and you can check whether you've got it right. Okay, first one. Find the tenth and the nth term in the following sequences. Now, to be honest, I would be tempted to work out the nth term first, especially now we've got this formula. We know un is equal to a r to the n minus 1. So all I've got to do is write down that a is 3, r, I'm multiplying by 2 every time, is going to be 2. And then I've got that un is equal to 3 times 2 to the n minus 1, and I'm done. You can then work out b by substituting in for 10, and it's going to be 3 times 2 to the 9. And you could have spotted that. You could have said, like, oh, okay, I'm, time, I'm timesing by a power of 2 every time. It's 3 times 2 for this term, 3 times 2 squared for the third term. It's going to be 3 times 2 to the 9 for the 10th term. That's one way of doing it. But just easier to just use the nth term, really, isn't it? And then I get 1, 5, 3, 6. No worry, it'd be there. Forget that. B is actually this one. 40 minus 20. So this is a first question of a geometric sequence with a negative common ratio because I'm multiplying through by minus a half. Yeah, divided by minus two, but we always talk about it as, as if we're multiplying something. So I've got that a is equal to 40, r is equal to minus a half, un then comes straight out as 40 to the uh, times, sorry, minus a half to the n minus 1. And I'd be tempted then to just go, yeah, go straight to u10, substitute that in, 40 times minus a half to the 9, and that turns out to be minus 5 over 64. Now, in the model answers, they actually, they decide, I, I think this is absolutely fine, but in the model answers, they do a bit of manipulation, and I'm just going to show you it. No, it's not there. I put some model answers underneath, apparently not. Um, what they do is they manipulate the nth term, so it's minus 1 to the n minus 1 times 5 over 2 to the n minus 4. They do this by writing a half is 2 to the minus 1, separating this bracket, separating the 40. I just think, like, really, does that is that actually nicer than that? I think this is clearer, so I'm happy with that. If you're asked to write it in a different form, like write it in the form a times 5 divided by 2 to the power of p, then you might have to do this. But, you know, it's manipulation. But the main thing is that we can find the nth term. Next question. The first two terms of a geometric sequence are 4 and 20. And the last term is 62,500. How many terms are there altogether? Well, we don't want to just keep multiplying by 5 until we get there. We want a quicker way. So let's figure that out. A is going to be 4. This is A, R, isn't it? So we can see the difference. We multiply through by R. Multiplying through by 5 or, or 20 divided by 4. It's going to be 5. So we can write down that the nth term is equal to 4 times 5 to the n minus 1. So if I want to find the last term, let's call it u capital N, it's going to be 4 times 5 to the n minus 1, and that is equal to 62,500. Rearrange it, 5 to the n minus 1, we're going to need to do a little division. Get my class whiz out, 62,500 divided by 4, 15625. Now, you could try some values of n until it works, but we've got better methods, don't we? 
we've solved equations like this, we can take logs. And I would take log to base 5. Okay, so I need to do... How do I do log to base 5? Here we go. Log to base 5 of my answer is equal to 6. This thing on the left is just n minus 1. Um, by definition, it's like, what do I raise 5 to the power of to give 5 to the n minus 1? It's got to be n minus 1. Or you can imagine bringing this down and then log 5 to base 5 is 1, whatever you want, really. Not whatever you want, but, you know, either those two things. And we're going to get that n is capital 7. That's the number of terms. To be fair, you could have done that by, you know, just trying numbers. But if I made the number a lot bigger, that when n was like 53 or something, which would be obviously a massive uh, last term, but, you know, you'd, logs would really be beneficial there. So make sure you can you can do your logs. They're going to come back in this in this uh topic in different places so just really advantageous okay show that there are two geometric sequences whose first term is five and whose fifth term is 80 each of these sequences find the nth term all right this is getting a bit trickier let's write these terms down five i don't know what that one is i don't know what that one is i don't know what that one is but i do know that the fifth term is 80. right now let's write down the general well, a general sequence, AR, AR squared, AR cubed, AR to the four. So basically I've created simultaneous equations. That was meant to be a four. A is equal to five, AR to the four. And you might have jumped straight that, to, to, you could have jumped straight to that, to be honest, for the fifth term. That's going to be equal to 80. So I can divide the bottom one by the top one, and that's going to give me r to the 4 is equal to 80 divided by 5. Um, my brain's working a bit slowly today, but I think that's 16. If I want to find the fourth power, then actually, with the real number system, it's just going to be two solutions. It's going to be plus or minus root 16, and I'm going to get... What am I doing here? Plus and minus the fourth root of 16, which is plus and minus 2. 2 can be raised to the power of 4 to give 16, but so can minus 2. So I'm nearly there. Un is going to be 5 times 2 to the n minus 1. Or un is going to be 5 times minus 2. To the n minus one. I think that's that was a big one. I think that's absolutely fine to leave it like that. I'm just going to make that one a bit neater. Okay, nice one. Next one. The numbers three x and x plus six form the first three terms of a geometric sequence with all positive terms. Find the possible values of x, the tenth term of the sequence. All right, remember. Let's actually let's write it down. Let's just remind ourselves this is our general form and this is our actual sequence. Remember, we are multiplying by r each time. What that means is x divided by 3 is equal to r. But what that also means is that x plus 6 divided by x equals r. I'm dividing the third term by the second term. The second term by the first term, I'm going to get the common ratio. And what does that mean? That means I can form an equation. And you know what this is going to turn into. Good friends, a quadratic. I can cross multiply essentially to give x squared is equal to 3x plus 6. Now I'm betting this is going to factorize x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0 x minus 6, x plus 3 equals 0, x is equal to minus 3 or 6. 
but it's told me that all the terms are positive. So I'm going to need to reject the minus 3. So x is equal to 6. The tenth term is then going to be, um, I haven't actually found r, have I? So r is going to equal 2 because I've got the sequence 3, 6, and 12. So u10 is going to be, not 2, why have I written that? 3 times 2 to the 9, and I don't know what that is, 3 times 2, I've forgotten how to raise powers, 2 to the 9, which equals, didn't I have that before, 1, 5, 3, 6. Okay, I think that is all right. Let's try the last one. What is the first term in the geometric progression 3, 6, 12, 24 to exceed 1 million? This is kind of like, a bit like, oh, the last terms, uh, what was it? 62,500. But it's not, it might not equal 1 million. It's got to exceed 1 million. So it's the same kind of deal, but we're going to get an inequality. Now, again, you could just keep multiplying by 2 until you get above 1 million. But this time, I think, also, that's not, let's just forget about that. That's not mathematically very good, is it? So we can write down that A is equal to 3, R is equal to 2, and then I can write down that my nth term is equal to 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. And I want to basically solve, I want to find u capital N. You don't necessarily have to call it capital N. And it's got to exceed 1 million. I'm just going to write it as 10 to the 6 because I'm trying to restrict the amount of writing I'm doing. Okay, so I've created an inequality with an exponential, but we've dealt with these. I'm just going to, I don't take logs first. No, no, no. I divide through by the thing in front of the exponential, divide by 3. Now I'm going to take logs. I'm going to take logs to base 2. And that's going to give me n minus 1 is greater than eighteen point three four. I was doubting myself then for a moment, but no, I'm correct. That means n is going to be bigger than nineteen point three four. And so the first term is going to be the twentieth term. Maybe I should just write that below. 20th term. And I'm done. So we can see, if we summarize, we've discovered the nth term. I hope I've convinced you that's true. We've seen kind of why it's called a geometric series. We've applied it to find the nth term of some sequences real quick, including negative common ratios. We've applied it when we know the last term to work back to the number of terms. And we've used logs. Effectively. We've dealt with problems where we might know the first term and, an, and the fifth term, for example. Many others like these problems we can now deal with. We can get an equation for in terms of R by cancelling out A. We can solve it and we can reject solutions if we're given extra conditions. If we're given geometric series uh, sequences, not series, in terms of X, we can use that knowledge to create equations and calculate essentially calculate the ratio um, so that it must be geometric. And we can look at geometric progressions or sequences, same thing, that exceed a number. And again, we use our logs. This time we need to, you know, we just need a, a few extra little steps, but it's the same sort of thing. Hope you're happy with that. Thank you.